like taking the red and the blue pill thing. No? Yeah, there it is, blue light, so we get a green. Uh, that makes it confusing. <laughs> Everybody still awake? Yeah. Enjoying it so far? Yeah. Now you're gonna listen up to the weirdest guy in the in the bunch. I totally don't fit in because you guys are all PowerShell experts and I'm on in another camp. Hi. <laughs> okay, that's fun. People start waving at me just like just like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that I that I already figured out. It's it's. Uh, yeah, I already had a great day today. I mean, uh, it's fun to see people enthusiastic about a product which has been evolving over the co last couple of years, and it's really fun to see. Yeah. I am. Is this better? I think it's. I think it's the mic which is. Mike is having issues with the mic. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> Here we go again, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, no, mild profanity allowed, yeah? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I had once this discussion with the guys from uh, from Redmond that I uh, was gonna do last year an Azure Conf uh, presentation. The first things they put into the disclaimer, please, mild profanity. <laughs> and we went and said, is it an oblig obligatory thing? Is it uh, something that we need to do or avoid? Yeah, okay. So, first of all, let me just welcome you to my little talk on uh, the DevOps Diaries from Microsoft Azure, which we used to call Windows Azure, which used to be Azure Services, which used to be, you know, you get the thing. Um, why is my power slide? Okay. Is this better? All right. First, a little bit about me. Um, I tried to do this in a PowerShell way. <coughs> I hope you kind of like the idea. So, first of all, my name is Mike Martin. No, I'm not British. I'm from Antwerp. Sorry, I'm from Belgium. You get to live with it. Uh, for the Dutch people, yeah, I've been from Belgium. Uh, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> so, um, what I do is I, I work for a company called Crosspoint Solutions, which is a member of the Kronos Group. This is really annoying because my mic keeps sliding down and I want you to give you. Is that better? Still hear me in the back? Okay. Uh, I work for the Kronos Group under a, a company called Crosspoint Solutions. We ac they actually do uh, behind CRM, and I'm totally not involved with that, so that's fun. Um, and a little bit besides that, be a, besides being a solution architect, so that's both in infrastructure and development. Yeah, I'm a little bit a weird guy. I'm what they call the hybrid scenario. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I actually am, and this is where the most fun goes for me is that I'm an actual actual Microsoft community lover. I have a lot of affiliations with uh, the Belgian user group for Azure, um, on which occasionally we do events in the evening. We invite uh, national and international speakers on various topics because Azure is a humongous beast. Uh, I'm also an at Microsoft Azure MVP, already the second year. Hopefully the third one next year. Uh, yes, and I get re-elected every April first. So that's the best joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> whoever won, whoever had that idea to go on and nominate people on the first of uh, April should be shot somewhere. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm also a meet member. Uh, I'm a part of the Microsoft Extended Experts team in Belgium. We do uh, evangelizing talks uh, for Microsoft in Belgium. We give the uh, training on various topics depending on what your specialties are. Next to that, I'm also an Azure Insider and Azure Advisor. It's more on Microsoft Corp level. We get a little bit more insight into the business uh, perspective and portfolio that Microsoft has with uh, various customers and so on and so on and so on. So enough about me. Talk of the day. Yeah, I only got a couple of minutes, apparently. Uh, I'm not gonna go try not go over my time. If you got any questions, shoot fire, whatever you do, throw something at me, at least don't try to do it with chairs because that hurts and then I cannot answer your questions anymore. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so if you got a, any questions, just throw them in the group as you've uh, been doing the last couple of days already. Yeah. So this talk is is a little lab on, on the DevOps side uh, with PowerShell, of course. Also, it would be a talk for the PowerShell Summit. On where Azure relates to DevOps and PowerShell, and it ranges from deployments to automated automation and the evolution that we're going. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not doing any deep dive DSCs. I mean, you had already a lot of deep dive DSCs here. Uh, um, I think you know more about it than I do. Um, but at least I'm going to show you where you can use it. 
So it's not going to be on DSC, it's going to be about the usage of DSC in Azure also. Right. Now, first things first, what happens on a Friday evening? You get the developer coming up saying, hey guys, I need to serve by Monday morning. Can you do that? And you go like, yeah, that's the face you're going to pull, right? And that, that's the history as, um, I thought it was Steve this morning who already mentioned it. Yeah, IT is changing. We got this constantly changing landscape and people are just willing to do their own stuff. We see business going into services, their rent services like Salesforce, Dynamics, CRM, uh, and they just go on and on and on and just, just keep renting software and IT gets in the gold. I mean, we have no idea anymore what's running in our, in our organization because Business now have credit cards, and credit cards are dangerous because they can buy stuff with it, on which we don't have any overview. Yeah. That's why, um, the reason why is because they w are fed up of being able to wait six, seven, eight months on one server to deploy one application, on which upon deployment the application fails to run uh, on the Monday morning that the application should go live. Yeah. And who do they blame? Well, they blame IT. The IT guys blame the developers. The developers blame the IT guys because, hey, you didn't read our specs. What fix you go? And, and so on and so on. So most of the time, if we deploy an application, something like this happens. And it ricochets back. <laughs> Typical Monday morning scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can watch it in rerun. It's, it's very fun. <laughs> so basically what happens is, Basically what happens is you deploy something, and you go like, yes, beer time, Friday afternoon, you come back, you test it, and on Monday morning, <coughs> it explodes back in your face. And these are the scenarios that you want to avoid. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, this, this stays funny. I'm just going to slide away from it. <laughs> yeah, that should hurt like hell, right? Uh, I'm not going to ask for a test subject on stage. Trust me. Uh, so, from an IT's perspective, what, what we are here for is we are no longer a uh, enabler, but we are a supporting service for business, and business counts on us. Yeah. And that's the entire s introduction story that I want to make. Yeah. So, luckily enough, we have all these tools at our disposition <coughs> to manage all of this. Yeah. And one of them is we just have sandbox environments on which you can have our dev environments, our QA environments. They can be the same, they can be different if you want to, please. Who has different environments for every step of the way? And who can tell that they are the same, exactly the mm -hmm. same? At <laughs> least one. <laughs> and he's doing it right, probably. Someone is lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's lying. Is he, if he's lying, he's doing it wrong, because that way he wouldn't be owner of the job he's holding today, I think, right? <coughs> yep. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's the entire thing. And, we've, and it's not only on the way the, the environments look like, it's also on the content of the data. That's also something that's, it's, that is lightly forgotten. We don't, maybe you don't need the full set, but maybe some subsets will help. So that's something we lightly forget. Yeah. Now, um, it's not only in, in cloud, but we also have, and that's most where most of the enablers for cloud computing come from, is that we mostly see hybrid scenarios. Yeah. We don't go for native native cloud alone, unless you're going for real SaaS, yeah. so uh, software as a service. Yeah. Uh, then you're going for a real cloud, but most of the times we just see we have connections with the data center, uh, we have connections with Azure, we're going to connect those two worlds, but we also need to manage them and deploy our, our services there. Yeah. So Azure is an enabler for that. Uh, what we can do there is we can grab pre-configured images, we can upload our own images, but it's more than just VMs. I mean, who's been working with Azure? A couple. Who has n totally no clue what Azure can do? You can raise your hand, at least. <laughs> <laughs> li I like that, I like that. At least you're honest, at least you're honest. Um, no, it keeps growing, yeah, and, and if, we, and if we take a look at the evolution of Azure, we started, we started uh, I'm saying we, yeah. that's because I feel so affiliated to the entire written on the team over there, although I'm not a Microsoft uh, employee, unfortunately. <coughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that was an open solicitation, uh, no. But the thing is, we evolved from um, a true pass environment 
to a positive environment on where we now are totally building upon virtual machines which enables you guys to do more and more business. Yeah. Don't see cloud as an endangering of your job, see cloud as an extension of your data center and provide additional services on top of that. Yeah. Provide the DevOps and mechanisms for your, for your companies that you're working for or even for your customers. Yeah. You can be as um, successful in cloud service management as you can be in on-premise service management. That's just a small bi uh, small business note that I'm giving you. Now, um, what we see more and more is that people are using cloud as their dev and quality assurance environments uh, and that they're running their production environments still on-prem. Why is that? Uh, we have issues latency-wise. We, uh, we have no trust in putting our data into the cloud. All these have pros and cons. Yeah. I should be evangeli evangelizing the, uh, the platform, but still, I can assume that people are still scared of cloud because it's a big unknown. We've only been there for like what, a couple of years? Yeah. It's totally new. In yeah. internet time, that's like two decades. Yeah, but for yeah, <laughs> internet, yeah, and we've been doing cloud since the beginning. I mean, we all use mail because, to be honest, cloud is nothing really, really new. But the concept of putting everything into the cloud is <laughs> something what scares people away. And I'm totally, I totally agree with you, sir. Really, I totally do. I mean, it, it has been proven that it is safe and stable, although we can prove differently. <coughs> Heart bleeds <laughs> and all these other things, iCloud. Hmm? Just to name a few. Uh, so I understand their concerns. Now, to get to the entire story, so people are separating their environments and they want to just start using cloud but in the same way they're using their on-premise environments today. So what we can do is we can just hook up our system centers to it. We can just start using our tools that we already know and just exploit the environments that we are unaware of or the things that we can do with it. Yeah. As we know, and as I already mentioned, Azure is a humongous beast. Yeah. As Jeffrey Kiley mentioned it, it keeps on growing, yeah, it keeps on feeding on us. Um, every morning I, w I awake scared, seeing at my phone, at my Windows phone, saying, is there a new service being G8 without we, we knowing of it? Yeah. So every, every day I have to learn new stuff. So yes, it keeps on growing. Yes, it's uh, an issue for MVPs like me because I have to keep on learning and learning and learning. But on the other hand, it, it, it also keeps evolving in the correct way. The, f the features keep being improved and everything keeps getting better and better. And as you can see, there's already a lot of features that you can use. And all of these, of, or most of these, can be managed through PowerShell. Yeah. Is it easy? Not always. Yeah. Some things aren't supported yet, uh, like media services, they only get like four commandlets. Don't do much with it, only the management of the storage. Yeah. Uh, but things like, um, which have just been in introduced, are things like traffic managers, uh, improvements for uh, virtual networks, the entire management uh, stack uh, for services and VMs, of course, right? So these things keep getting better and better, and still, everything what you need, just you grab it together and only use what you need. I mean, that doesn't mean that you have to use everything in Azure. But then again, we are we're already aware of that. So developing and testing and running your apps is, you, know, you get the developers still developing their code, but they should be aware that they should now start working in a different way. Because if they just do a deploy from their, from their development stations, from other Visual Studio, well, that could also go wrong. Just as a, although we have all these mechanisms like staging and production areas where we can just switch between all the different um, segments of our cloud. Uh, we can have multiple subscriptions, we can manage all those, but still it comes with a great risk. Yeah. Uh, the IT admin, well, he got a little bit more power now because he also needs to administer the, uh, the uh, Azure uh, environment, so maybe on a separate subscription wouldn't be so bad. Mm. These are just uh, some slides in there for your reading. 
I will put these slides. Uh, is was there an agreement on where to put yeah. the slides afterwards? Let me have the slides when you're done now. Okay. So I'll give you the slides. If you want more slide where I want more demos, just come and ask. So and this is where the good stuff comes in. Azure by default is automatic DevOps enablement. Why is that? Because by by definition, cloud enforces us to do a more DevOps -y way. Yes, I know you can do portal once, click, click, click next. You don't want that. Okay. We are IT guys. We want to script everything. We want to have a, a good version control on our scripting. Again, I uh, come back to Stephen this morning. Please try to now start doing the same things as developers do as an IT person. Yeah. Use things like Git. Use things <coughs> like TFS. <coughs> they come connected with these things. Yeah. I mean, the devel if the developers can have their source control into TFS online and they can have automated builds and they can push it immediately to the cloud, you can make that as an extension, write scripts on them, run them in the same built environment and just have them pushing it to the, sa to the correct uh, VMs that you have been building over the last couple of days. Right. So by default, enforcement of DevOps period. <laughs> don't doubt that anymore. Start doing it. That's the only advice that I'm giving. And don't start planning over five years like they're doing at a bank now. DevOps is an age thing. Let it flow. Just let it flow. Start talking. <coughs> collaborate. People will say that DevOps is not about collaboration. They should be shut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, what I have now at a customer, yeah, we want to do DevOps. All right, cool. Let's do DevOps. And they put two teams together. Yeah, but these teams can't talk to each other. <coughs> Wait, why? Segregation of concerns. No, you moron, that's totally against the DevOps principle. You need to make sure that people talk to each other. Yeah? So it's not only about having the tools, it's also about talking to each other. Right? So keep that in mind, people. If you're not doing that, you don't have a good basis for your DevOps environment. Okay. Now for Azure, there it comes with a little bit of, bit of caution. Oh, by the way, can I step by this mic? Because is this one recording or? <coughs> okay. um, it comes with a little bit of caution, uh, especially on subscriptions. Always make sure that you're running in the correct subscription because you can have multiple subscriptions at one account, whether you're either logged in as an organizational account or whether you're logged in with your uh, Microsoft Live ID or whatever federated account. You can have multiple subscriptions. So beware. If you're running scripts that you want to run in production, always make sure that you select the right subscription. If you want to test something, don't test it in production. Yeah. Those are the things that you need to focus on. Yeah. Uh, also, a little bit on the powers that be. Now, this has been changing the last couple of weeks. I don't know whether you guys heard the latest announcement in Azure, but we now have our back, role-based access account uh, control which is a good thing. Yeah. We needed to wait until this point in time, although Azure is already five years old. Yes, it is that old. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind, and it can only be managed now through the new portal. Yeah. There will be PowerShell support in the near future. I mean, Guan and his team are doing a great job. Um, we're, we're chatting <coughs> constantly with these guys, and the, the, these guys are really doing a great job. So keep that in mind. Now, of course, you want some early support, yeah? PowerShell commandlets are here. The only thing is that you need to install them. And I was wondering, the guys from the PowerShell Git team, will these ever be allowed in a repository? Who's, who's responsible? Is there anybody responsible for PowerShell Git in this? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, Jeffrey. PowerShell Git? <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, but the, thi the thing is that I want to see those in the repository. I want to see the Azure commandlets in there, so start talking to Guan and his team. I don't only want them on GitHub. I just want to do an import. Yeah. Uh, and, I s and I saw that you guys are also using my Git, which is a good thing. Yeah, keep up the good work. So getting the PowerShell commandlets, uh, you can find them either at GitHub <coughs> and you can contribute to them if you ask them nicely. Uh, you can install them through the web platform installer. Who knows that? Right. So that's. They always say that's a, a, a dev thing. I also say that's it, that it is an infrastructure thing because if you want to deploy software to your uh, desktop clients, this is also something that you can use. Uh, and of course, into the Azure Realm, you can have an off, uh, an, uh, um, separate installer. Yeah. Once you're done with that, 
we can start using them. Yeah. And since the beginning of the of the first versions with the new portal, there was uh, a PowerShell support. So it's already been growing in the last couple of years. Oh. So first of all, if you're doing this, if you're not opening the commandlet prompt uh, from Azure, you just, just need to import the module Azure. Very easy, very straightforward. This is stuff that you know. Yeah. Uh, and there's a couple of ways of connecting to your subscriptions in PowerShell. You can either do this by the uh, publishing settings. Yeah. Now, publishing settings comes with a little bit of caution here again, because if you're using the publishing settings, that means you also download the management certificates. If, sorry, has it been dropping again? Better? Better? Okay. So if you're using the, um, <laughs> if you're importing the uh, publishing settings, that means that you're also using a management uh, certificate, right? Management certificates are basically evil because once you get, no, it has the advantage that it still stays around, right? So you can always abuse them. So use them wisely on a PC. Um, in the past, what we tended to do is have a separate PC with one management certificate on there. Don't pass them on uh, and do all the deployments from there. Now with the, uh, the Azure account, you can have your own accounts, connect to them and have the R back control sim simmer in. So that's a better way of doing it. This also now supports uh, credentials. So you can create a credential uh, object in PowerShell and pass it along. So that way you can use it. Still hearing in the back? You're awfully quiet. <laughs> Am I We're simmering? Didn't? Maybe I should put it on my nose. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my glass. Yeah, I can try that, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. Let's see if this this makes it any better. Too low? Oh, yeah. I can start walking like this. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the day, I get a sore neck. Yeah, this, I, c I can hear myself now, which is a lot better. <coughs> Not. Um, okay. So what was I about to say? Okay. So very quiet. I don't hear any questions. So <laughs> probably not deep enough, right? All right. So as I mentioned already, and once you get your connection going, you, know, you want to do several things, right? Uh, one of them is the pass site. Yeah. Um, don't forget, this is where Azure grew on. Pass was the first <coughs> implementation of Azure. Yeah. Uh, it was packages that you were uploading to the cloud um, based upon stateless VMs. So desired state configuration ain't going to work here because you always need to reinstate the full machine. Although you can just use it for installing, but afterwards has no use because every single time you do an upgrade, upgrade, what you do is just reinstate the full machine and redeploy your packages. So this is not going to help. Uh, it's very dev oriented, eh? um, but it gave you the very easiest way of implementing a DevOps team because you're always starting from scratch. Yeah. To a minor side, that can also be more error prone because if something is wrong during the, the upload, that means your service won't come up because of the unavailability. So always plan ahead of your fault and upgrade domains if you're doing this. Uh, make sure that you have enough roles running so that way every um, cycle that you go through and uh, do an upgrade, every machine goes down machine by machine or group by group. So that way your serve stays up, one gets upgraded, that one is good, the next one gets upgraded, that one is good, if that goes down it will be replaced by another one which is already running in the back yeah, because don't forget everything in the background has three copies yeah. go ranging from storage to VMs so this is also um, applied to this so let us take a look if we do a um, and I got an issue because I can't see anymore when I put my Is it this one? No, it's not this one. I had everything opened up with the scaling of the resolution. Yeah, okay. So your developers, they, they developed uh, the Visual Studio. And this is, again, where uh, getting to know source control becomes important. Because if you know where to find the sources of the application, and you know what branch and stable build is on, you just can get the latest version, either to the, the means that they have or to like for instance uh, anybody know Poshkit? Mm -hmm. yeah 
that they do know. <coughs> they don't use source control, but they all know PostKit. That's great. So uh, uh, the, the one advantage that you have with PostKit is that if you do this, <coughs> uh, let me see, do I, what do I have here? Come on, kick in. I need a new PC. And now it hangs. Come on. Yeah. The one advantage that you have, and it's not very clear, but you gotta trust me on that one. Uh, the one advantage that you have with PostGate is that you immediately see all the changes that have been applied and waiting, even from within your own ISE or your console. So that's a pretty cool thing. So if you still need to m apply changes back to the master branch, you can just see how many that are waiting, how many that are ne coming back from the from the repository, and so on and so on. So try to adapt these uh, developer-like uh, toolings and get in into the same ALM flow. Yes, ALM, application lifecycle management, because actually that's that, that's what I keep telling my my developers is that a PowerShell developer is also a developer, so you can just easily embrace those same principles. Right. So good enough, uh, enough about that. So if we're doing uh, deployments from packages from pass, well, that's one of the first things that they created. And nowadays, we can just easily cre recreate the packages. I'm just going to go to the uh, source where I have a demo um, waiting. So I'm going to run that. I'm into my correct environment. I'm going to create my, uh, myself the package. Yeah. And these commandlets come out of the box. Yeah. So it created me the package. This is the thing that I'm going to upload to the cloud and which will then automatically generate a service and put it either in staging or production. Yeah. And after that, if it's like for instance in staging, I just can send out the command and say switch me the environment. So that way we have already tested the environment. We this is our stable build, this is our stable application and we can push it back to the production environment. So if I now do this, Probably this will fail because I had some issues uploading the package. So sorry if it fails, but you you have warned already, right? Setting the service project so that way I just choose my deployment slot, the production, yeah, on the storage account which I want to deploy my package to before it gets deployed as a service. Yeah. Because that way Azure can pick up the package from the storage account and create a cloud service out of it and create the application out of it. If I now just do this, publish the Azure service project, it will start verifying the account, it will start connecting to the cloud, uh, it will create my hosted service, uh, it's an older demo, yeah, and it will start uploading my package. Yeah. And this is where it goes wrong because I get timeouts on the uploading. It's because of the latency of the of the internet connection. But normally, about eight minutes later, once the package has been deployed, you get a new service running. So that's actually the first way of you guys doing a DevOps way within Azure and the commandlets that you have. Yeah. It's very easy. You just write your scripting. Make sure that either way you get uh, a branch connection first, get the latest version, and create your package out of there. And th this basically works for any kind of uh, software development. Yeah. Whether it's Java, whether it's um, Django, whether it's PHP, whatever, this works for every kind of project. No questions on this? Can I move on? All right. Where's my presentation? Okay. Now, this is a little bit of how this works. So you get your source, uh, the developer checks in the source, and they build. That's not the way you want it to do. You want control over that. So what you do is you create your PowerShell script. You connect to the same source of control. You build your, <coughs> uh, you build your package, and you just immediately upload it to uh, either the PaaS website or a cloud service, depending on what kind of a role you have. Very easy, very straightforward. Um, what you can also do is use Visual Studio Online for that and then also build from there and deploy to resource groups or whatever. Okay. 
the screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I keep having trouble with this thing, so. That's okay. Maybe I should just start doing it in the Antwerpian way, make a lot of noise, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so I had that demo already done. Cool. Now, um, since a couple of months, uh, Microsoft announced a lot of support for uh, DevOps out of the box with other toolings, like Chef and Puppet. And I think Stephen will be glad that I mentioned Chef once more. Uh, but yes. There's full support out of that, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Choice is always good. But luckily enough, there's also support for PowerShell DSC, which is even better, because that's everything you know, right? Or well, you should know, at least. Yeah. Um, these are being enabled <laughs> by uh, the means of custom extensions. Yeah? And in the beginning, we only had like the custom script one. So what you needed to do is uh, enable this custom script one and upload your PowerShell script along with the VM creation. Yeah. How, did that, how does that work? Well, first of all, you create your DSC configuration, mm. and then you just do it an upload of that configuration towards a blob in, in Azure. From there out, the uh, custom script will pick up the configuration of the bootstrapper, and it will start running. So this is a little bit of flow of how it works. So you get the bootstrapper. Uh, that will be put into the script extension. The script extension will execute the bootstrapper. Yeah. It will start reading out the configuration that it also found there. It will parse it. You know, this is normal DSC stuff. Get the resources from the gallery, make it into DSC resources, and start deploying your machine. The cool thing is that you can also use one git. <coughs> and this is where the phone starts in. I think Jeffrey is nodding because he knows this slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I thought I thought this demo that they gave that at that point in time was all really accurate of how, of how things work. Yeah. Um, the only thing that you need is just a couple of kilobytes of uploading of those scripts, and that's basically it. Everything else is being done in the cloud, and you have less of a hassle. It takes about 12 to 15 minutes to generate your virtual machine, provision it, yeah, and have a full-blown readiness machine at your disposal. Whether you want to put it in a, vi a virtual network or, or not, you can just start reusing the scripts, or even when they're already in the blob storage available. Right. So configuration. Now, maybe it's uh, a good thing to show you how that works. So the demo I have here, and unfortunately, that's going to fail also because I have an issue with the one git. Uh, since yeah, I've inst yeah, I did some installs, and I basically what I did was screw up my environment. That's what you get when you have a play around environment and yeah, you, you're not always that cautious. So I didn't do my testing very well, so he's going to be not pleased. Uh, but the, the thing is that when you, once you start um, creating your uh, uh, virtual machine, this is where the fun comes in. So this is where all the magic happens. So first of all, we're going to create a new uh, blob. Yeah? on which we're going to upload the DSC boot, the config of itself, and uh, of course my publish settings, because I want to be able to connect to the uh, correct cloud. I'm yeah. um, going to give it some names, yeah, passwords, very secure. I know. Always be sure that if you're running your scripts, that nobody can access those scripts. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to publish the configuration yeah, with all these all these variables and now and I'm looking for the correct line here I'm gonna add some additional um, things and this is where the extensions come in when you're uh, deploying your uh, your machines so you have uh, this new set of commands <coughs> uh, going set Azure VM extension yeah, on which you can add to a VM config which you already <coughs> did in, be in beforehand so what the VM would look like you give it the extension name, so in this case it will be the custom script extension because at that point in time there was not what I will show you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> so. um, the version that you need, this should, this should change because this is a hard way to do it. We should have less of, pa less of switches there. That's, that's again a, I don't a couple weeks ago we released a new <coughs> I know, that's what I'm going to show <laughs> in a couple of minutes. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. But also for the also for the for adding an extension should be easier. I according to me, it should be only one one uh, one switch. But hey, 
I can live with that. I mean, <coughs> there's no harm in doing a little bit more typing if you can reuse the script, right? Yeah. Then, of course, if you're doing special things with your VM, you still need to add some uh, ports. Yeah, especially when you're doing IIS installs, you need a port 80 or any other port that you want to run your uh, VM uh, uh, application server. Uh, and then just do new VM, you give the VM config along, everything will be parsed through the VM config, mm -hmm. that's plotted against it, and then just up. The cool thing is that you can also monitor the, um, the, the way the progress is going. So if the script is running, yeah, at a certain point in time, it will return you the prompt. And then you can start running these <coughs> lists because um, you can actually take a look at the resource uh, extension statuses and take a look how far along are that they are. So you get a full re uh, verbose uh, messaging back from your entire environment stating, oh, that's interesting, this one has failed. Why has it failed? And it gives you all the, the errors back. So this is very useful. Okay, so. If I would run this, this will fail, so I'm not going to run it, but at least you get the idea. Yeah. So first of all, it will start uploading the blobs, deploying the, uh, getting all the configuration ready, deploying the VM, and then afterwards, once the VM is running, it will do the bootstrapping and do the DSCA. So this is very cool stuff. I mean, getting a, a VM in 10 to 15 minutes, I think this is awesome. But, as Jeffrey already announced, it became easier a couple of weeks ago. And that's okay, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So, uh, they entered uh, and they added something, which is now the DSC extension. So, the team in Redmond is really putting a lot of effort into everything which is desired state configuration and everything which is uh, PowerShell. Yeah? And as you, can see, as you can see, and I'm going to show you immediately, because this is where, um, if I can find my correct PowerShell. Nope, it's not this one. This one? Yeah, here we are. So my entire script has been pushed down now to a couple of lines. I still need to do that stuff with all the ports and so, so don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, that still stays on the VM side. But now you can immediately add um, an extension from DSC, and this is the one where all the power comes from. You just, what you need to do is first you create your PS1 configuration. Yeah. Then you need to publish it uh, through a commandlet which has been uh, provided for your needs. Yeah. So publish Azure VM. I don't know whether you can see it. Let's, I didn't install Zoom <coughs> because I don't want to pay royalties to <laughs> Resinovich. Um, <laughs> Well, so publish Azure VM DSC configuration. Yeah. You give it the part of the PS1 that you just created, and that just stays the same. And if now do this, it will create a zip in storage, create all the funkiness next to it that you desire from DSC, and now I can start configuring my VM. So just a couple of lines. I'm going to create a new uh, VM config uh, <coughs> with the name PH Summit one uh, instance size small. I give the correct image name. Mm. Let me just put this away. I still need five more minutes, yeah, and then I'm gone. Thank you. Um, going to add the provisioning configuration to it. Uh, so I need my uh, username. Oh, by the way, if you ever use your, if you ever lose your um, password, there's also an extension for that for resetting your password. So that's also something that you can do through uh, PowerShell. Then I can set my extension to the VM of the DSC. Give it a couple of seconds. And this is about the eight minute demo that we have. If once this is done, I can start deploying this. This is actually a demo that actually does work. So. <coughs> Come on. Takes one. Yeah, man. Yep, here we go. I'm just going to start running it. And now this will start and kick me off a new VM provisioning immediately with all the DSC resources attached to it, going through the boot separate thing. So I don't need to write these immense scripts. I just have a couple of lines and limit it. So if you want to do that over an entire battery of VMs, want to add them to a, v to a virtual network, you can immediately do that just this way. That wasn't me. <laughs> can you still hear me in the back? 
Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to let that run. I'll come back to that in just a couple of seconds. Right. Now, of course, that's all manual work, and you want to do this in a more automatic way. Well, even Azure has something for same for that. For those who know Runbox and System Center, raise your hands. This is the feature that you're looking for, because this is, exa is exactly the same thing only a little bit more limited <coughs> to the Azure side, uh, but it works in the exact same way. The run box that you know in, what is it again, System Center? Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> yeah, those guards know best. Um, these are actually the same way that you're running these. Actually, it's a little secret. If you look at Azure in the background, it's nothing more than a big Hyper-V cluster with System Center in the back only a little bit more scalable than your own, but yeah. Red Dog has been growing, so they needed uh, methods. But basically, that's it. So now you can actually just use Azure Automation capabilities to run all your monitoring and your backing up from within a run book, just the way you do in System Center, or likewise. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of methods that you can take a look at. I have some scripts here which we can go over uh, if I can find them back easily. So that should be this one. So, yeah. So a friend of mine, this is a real production script that they were using for a customer. I don't have any names in there, so don't try that. He even deployed uh, the run box through uh, PowerShell because there's a full set of commands for that, for managing your entire run book environment. Yeah. So you just can add them, upload them, update them, and so on and so on, and publish them. Yeah. Uh, you can set schedules on them, so you can ske have schedules runs whenever you uh, desire. <coughs> yeah. um, you can have um, configurations in there for, for your own uh, subscription, but also for users. So if you want to add specific users, you can add those. Yeah. Uh, examples of, of scripts that you can do, for instance, is like, I want to get um, VM snapshots. I don't want to have ex um, expensive tooling for snapshotting my VMs in Azure. I want to do it in a more automatic way on a, on a blob storage. This is the way to do it, right? You just do an, uh, you now have this uh, thing in the portal where you can grab an image. You can do that through PowerShell also by saving the Azure VM image. So that way you can reuse that or restore your VM to a previous state. Yeah. It's a little bit like uh, Hyper-V snapshot. Right? Um, if you want to have snapshots, real snapshots of the blob, you can also do that. So all these things that you uh, know in Azure by uh, just having separate things, you can now do in the automations. Yeah? So this one, for instance, makes backups and snapshots of the virtual machines itself. Uh, for retention policy, we also have a cleanup um, uh, snapshots. So that way we schedule it every so many times and have a separate date for it. So that way you can have uh, a more retention wise uh, backing up. Also for connecting to your subscription, because that's something you need to do. You can have an automation account separate for a different subscription. So that way you can have su su um, cross subscription management, right? So that way you can have one from your management environment and one for your production environment. How does that work if you've got uh Multiple cloud scenario. Multiple what? Sorry. Cloud. So yeah, that's, that's what I just said. So, so multiple. You can still use a centralized. <coughs> yeah. So you can have a centralized subscription for your management and just have other subscriptions or other uh, VNets or whatever and just connect through them. Yeah. Different customers. Yeah. yeah. You could do that. Um, next step, last step, is the, <coughs> is the more stepping up to a more DevOpsy way. Uh, and I'm really enforcing it, is the introduction of the resource manager. And also for that, there's also already uh, PowerShell support. The only thing is that you don't see it immediately. There's only one way to getting there, and that's by means of switching your mode of working. And that way you can start working with resource groups under which you don't know, under which you no longer work with separate instances, but you actually work with resource group, which can be seen as one application. An application can exist out of more than just one machine. It can have a virtual machine, it can have a PaaS scenario, it can have a service bus needed, and it can have uh, SQL databases, for instance. Yeah. Um, this also, and the, there's, there's tooling on the way for that, which also creates PowerShell scripts from within Visual Studio, which will deploy <coughs> Uh, these uh, resource groups by means of uh, PowerShell commands. Right? 
how does it work? Well, you group everything together. This is this becomes really one application, right? And so no longer separate aisles. Okay. Um, how do you how do you find these things? Well, first of all, you need to switch Azure mode. If you do that, you get a lot of uh, importing and exporting of modules, yeah? and you get a total different set of uh, Azure commandlets. Once you've done that, you can start working with resource groups. Do note that this still is in preview; it hasn't been G8 yet. And if you want to uh, do it graphically, you can only do it through the new portal with all the blades and all the uh, histories and all the, the, the journeys that you have. Who hasn't seen the new portal yet? So on purple. I'm <coughs> if you want, I can give you a demo uh, because I'm uh, running out of time. So I think I got one more minute. So rounding up. So this is really <laughs> the future. If you want to go into uh, real DevOps, with PowerShell, start investigating and in, in, in investing time in these new commandlets and in this new way of uh, working around with your Azure assets, yeah? because this becomes more and more trivial. Right. Um, some caveats and some knowns. Well, Azure reacts just as any other DC. So what you do, we can do wrong in on-prem can go wrong also in the cloud. So keep that in mind. Just the same way, it's just another DC that you're running at, basically. Yeah. Um, make sure that you're when, when you're doing workload and environments, uh, there's a couple of things that we didn't were that we weren't able to do in the past. Now that has changed with uh, uh, fixed IPs that we can set and reserved IPs. But in the past, for instance, you couldn't just deploy an Active Directory in the cloud. You just needed to do a lot of PowerShell work before that because you need to set its DNS to its own, and that's something you couldn't do in the portal and so on and so on. And also keep in mind that you have all these different subscription uh, issues. That, uh, when doing production, then dev test things. Okay. If you want to contact me, I'm basically at the end of my talk here. Okay. If you want to contact me, I got an email address. I got a, a Twitter account of most seem to be following me. I also got a LinkedIn account, uh, a website on which I try to uh, post uh, regularly. Uh, and I do want to plug one thing. You've been <coughs> seeing me wearing this T-shirt the entire day. Well, on 21st of October, there's going to be Azure Conf. It's going to be kicked off by Scott Guthrie. I will be there live presenting on uh, Azure uh, out of the box uh, backing up systems. Uh, it's going to be live streamed. So no reason to go over to Redmond and start attending there because it's going to be live streamed so you can watch it and it's going to be recorded. We get like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 12 or 16 MVPs speaking on different topics. So if you're more interested into infrastructure or more int interested into document DB or for instance, you will find something of your uh, natural flavor. All right. Still one thing to say, thank you. Don't forget to fill out the evaluation forms. Be honest, even if I made you sleepy or <laughs> bored or whatever. I hope you found it. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, I'll just leave the stage to the next speaker. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> To get the yeah, I am. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. It's blinking.